Push the button, Pete. Woo! Can you hear him? No, he's gone again. <laughs> I don't know if we're live without him or not now. <laughs> oh, no. Pete, we can't hear you. Yes, we can hear you now. Yay! As always. You've disappeared again, Pete. Oh no. No. Hey. You've gone. Push the button again. Can you hear me? In the chat, Dean and uh, DJ Taz Dans. Yes, so you can hear me. So it's just Pete that's got tech problems. And since he's the one that's hosting it, um, yeah, <laughs> all good fun. Well, welcome to the IoT Live Show. Um, yeah, it just goes to show that, uh, you know, we set this up and started about, I don't know, three minutes ago. Um, but yeah, the important thing is, though, that you've got to have your tea. So I hope you've got your cup of tea there. Um, and uh, Pete, hopefully, will be he's, he's messaging me messages in... Um, yeah, so I'm really, he's sending tweet messages. Um, so, uh, Paneshkov, I'm, I've butchered that name. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah, I'm Panjakov. Yeah, anyway, um, welcome. I don't think I've seen that name before. Um, he, oh, DJ Taz Dan's either. So welcome to IT Live Show. We normally talk about lots of links and um, things we found in the IoT world um, over the last week or so, but we've been off the whole summer um, because kids are at home and summer holidays and it's a bit difficult to do things with the kids running around. Um, so we are here and tonight we're joined by Maria as well. Um, and Maria, where in the world are you at the moment? Hello. Um, do, you, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I I hear my voice back. You got. Uh, you need to maybe mute the uh, the the channel in the uh, in the ninja settings. Sometimes you've been there twice. You need to mute it. Okay. Uh, but okay. DJ Taz Dan says that he can hear you, which is good. And I don't hear an echo, so um... we hear you. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> All right, no, hold on. Hold on. Dean, Dean, Dean is saying he can't hear you. Um, so we can hear you in, in Ninja, or I can hear you in Ninja, but I, I'm not listening to the audio in Twitch. Um, I'm just looking at the chat. So, um, yeah, so uh, if you keep talking, you know, sort of testing one, two, three, Pete, then I'm sure they'll hear you eventually. Um, <laughs> I don't as I was saying, we normally talk about IoT stuff. When Pete gets his little setup working and pushes the right button, um, we can we can get back to the show. But Maria, you're here. Welcome as our special guest uh, this week. Um, why don't you tell everyone where you are and uh, and why you joined us this week? Thank you very much. I am Maria Anastasia from Greece. 
Um, as I like to say, I am passionate about IOT uh, computer engineer, and I really like your show. So I'm very happy to join you. Oh, thank you very much Excellent. for joining us. I, I think I yeah. might have it sorted. Uh, 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 maybe I, I can we see. Can we hear I can see it going. I can see it going up and down in the um, in the thing here. So I think I may have. Up that and down. Is that the technical term? Up and down. Up Pete. and down. Pete's yes. Up and down. Yeah. So we, De Dean so says yay. Yeah, so you must be able to hear you now. All right. We can sign off now. We finished. We, we finished. We, we can yes. sign off. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you all next week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Maria, you thank you very much for, for joining. Now, um, I've always called you Maria Anastasia. Is that how you prefer to be called? Or have you got anything else you prefer to call you? Or is it Maria Anastasia? Is that it? Um, I prefer Maria Anastasia, but uh, most uh, people just call me Maria. <laughs> yep, that's fine. Yeah, Maria Anastasia, I can live with that. That's fine. I don't, you know, it's, it's always polite to ask people how they like to be referred to. Yeah, I'd say so. I go by many names. <laughs> many, many names. That, that yeah. pilot dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All sorts, all sorts. So. Uh, yes, I mean... Cool, we're back. We, we are. It's hope everyone had a lovely summer um, and enjoyed the time off um, with family and friends and um, and uh, had a great time. Um, if you went on holiday, hope you had a great holiday. Hope you chose to fly Team Blue. If you did get on a plane this year, um, if you did, I didn't see you because I didn't see very many passengers on board uh, this year. You saw um, many boxes. Of boxes. Yeah. Many yeah. boxes, mm. lots and lots of salmon, but not very many passengers, sadly. <laughs> um, but yes. So, salmon. But, uh, yes. We fly tons of stuff all over the place. I don't know what's, <laughs> what's so good about Scottish salmon, but hey, there you go. Mm. Mm. But, um, so anyway, Pete, what's been going on with you? Um, a bit busy. Uh, with one thing or another. Obviously, I think probably the last time we were on uh, um, the Twitch stream, it was July OT. So, I mean, we, we've had an entire month in the middle of uh, of that that wasn't July OT. So, um, I mean, Cliff and I, back in uh, the beginning of July, we released a whole heap of uh, Percept blog posts, um, which was great. It was great to, to write those, and I'm turning uh, one of them into a talk. There it is. There's a Percept look, and it's... Uh, an Azure Percept? Yeah. Yeah, I'm working with a client, and uh, they got very, very excited when I announced that I don't show you spike this peak. Now available in the UK. Oh, was Yay! it? No, I didn't spot that. Yes, oh. as as of the first of this month. So um, I completely, I see it the other day, and because um, I was at the client's office, and I was like, ah, oh. I won't do it in the middle of a meeting with the client because obviously that's a bit rude. Uh, but I'll tweet it when I got back in the car, and I've literally just remembered. So I'll, uh, I'll mess you up. But it's now available, general release in Europe. You can now go and grab your uh, your set. Um, and uh, I think the shipping date is a couple of weeks, obviously, because it's come away from the US. Um, and uh, it's not this one, which is a Microsoft one. Um, it will be uh, the Asus one, which is the Microsoft partner um, that is building these for Microsoft. But um, they're awesome devices. Me and Peter have written a couple of blog posts about them. Um, Pete's doing a talk. I think they're doing a talk as well about the uh, the video side as well. And uh, I'm working with a client that hopefully will get to use some of these uh, these awesome devices on a client project, which would be kind of cool. And if I do, I will make sure I blog about it as well on the tech community because um, it's kind of a cool project as well. So, there you go. There's my shout out for the set team. <laughs> Keep them happy. <laughs> I like it. Uh, now, yes. um, normally what we'd have. Um, is a bunch of links that. Um, oh, I, I wonder what that sound was, but we'd have a bunch of links um, uh, about to the stuff that we would have seen in the last week. But as it happens, we've got lots and lots of links that we've been collecting in the last month. So I've just had to separate mine into two two lots of different browsers because the tabs don't fit. Uh, in fact, I might need to do three. Uh, and while I was doing that, one of the YouTube videos that I found, uh, that started playing. So I don't know what the hell that was. Um, so there we are. So hopefully you can see all of that lot. Um, so, I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to know how to narrow this down. Um, tell you what, I'll, I'll share this one first. Uh, if I do that, then hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, so uh, Cliff just mentioned that I'm giving a talk on the uh, Percept. Uh, specifically about home automation with the Percept on the uh, the speech side, the audio module. Um, I've got some feedback. I don't know if I can hear um, myself or something like that. One of, one of you lot um, 
your mic is picking the speakers up, I think. Um, so that's probably what I can hear. Uh, I don't know if uh, you lot can hear that on the stream or if it's just me that can hear that in my headphones. Um, but either way, uh, I'll carry on. Uh, yeah, so this is this is based on a blog post that I've written on the Microsoft Tech uh, Community uh, um, uh, blog post site. There, um, all about how you can control a um, well, specifically a Raspberry Pi with a relay and a, a desk lamp connected to it, so that you can um, say commands to the uh, to the sound module on here, the audio module on the Percept, and then that feeds through an Azure function and then out to an IoT hub and then down to a, a Raspberry Pi with a relay and a, a desk lamp connected to it, and you can turn that on and off. So, um, yeah, that that's kind of done that. Now, I, I've seen that both of you lot have uh, muted your, your mics. Just be careful, of course, that does mute your stream as well. So if you, you know, don't want to have the same audio problems that I had, uh, <laughs> uh, which is fine. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is that that link. Um, I'll make a little bitly of that actually, and um, da, da, da. let's do that, and we'll stick that in my in the links. Oh, see, I didn't set this up, so um, I'm uh, a little bit slow. There we go, IoT Live. Um, what are you? What's your talk going to be about there, Cliff? That you mentioned. I know you said the the video side, but what, what, don't forget you muted. That's such a twenty twenty thing as well to do, <laughs> isn't it? We're nearly the end of twenty twenty one, and I'm not unmuting my mic. Come on. <laughs> um, I was, uh, I've forgotten what I was saying now. Um, you said, what was my talk about? I'm, I'm talking about Handy um, at the end of the month, uh -huh. um, but there may be a clash on the date they've given me with, uh, with flying a plane, um, but we're trying to resolve that at the moment. So my date might move on a .NET doc show um, uh, thing. Um, yeah, if not, then uh, it, you know we'll, we'll do something different. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what it's about. If I can't, if it's over, if I'm overseas, I'm not going to carry handy with me because it gets um, the, the security a little bit upset <laughs> when you've got all these electronics and wires in your bag. Um, so I'll do something else, probably something about the nano, uh, nano framework and uh, an ESP32. Mm. Kind of cool. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a bit, aren't we? Hopefully, yeah. So um, yeah. Uh, so that's cool. Um, uh, moving on, uh, we've got a new version of the Arduino IDE, um, which I'm not entirely sure what's new, um, but you know, it's an IoT show, so it's always good to to talk about the fact that we've got some new software there. So actually, there must be a um, uh, like a what's new with this? Our oh, release notes there. Look, yeah, there's a new version of the uh, of 2.0 as well IDE. Um, which is um, much better hmm. than the, the, the one hmm. version because you've got things like um, uh, co-completion, so you can like tab to complete a, a, a thing, so you can dot into something and, and tab complete it. Um, it's got um, a bit, uh, the IDE is better, so when you do file new, it doesn't create a new window, like completely open a new page. Uh. Um, it's a bit more, a bit more like VS Code. Um, if I'm honest, um, but still nowhere near as awesome as VS Code. Yeah, I'm not sure so, I've installed uh, yeah. version two actually. Yeah, I yeah I, I've installed it and I, I had it open the other day because I was looking at some code and it's easy to look in there and it said that there's a new version, but I've not installed the update. So uh, what's that, beta 11, is it? So, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, something. So it's, it's, uh, we had talks about it previously on the show. Hmm. Um, so yeah, there is, uh, there is a lot of good things in there. Um, um, it's got some uh, crude debugging as well, which is one of the reasons I installed it, because it's uh, kind of cool. Yeah, you have to have the right device, I think, for that, don't you? Only support certain you devices. Do, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Not the Uno. That doesn't support it. I forget which ones it was yeah. now. But uh, I spotted this the other day. I don't know if um, either of you pair spotted this, this uh, book um, of logic circuits. With It's got a couple of buttons and a couple of LEDs in it, and they flick through. Uh, oh, there we are. That must be the video, is it? Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. So, I see it as well. Very interesting. That's a, that's a cool book, isn't it? Imagine using that in a classroom. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. You could do all sorts that way, though, couldn't you? But Yeah. That's such a clever idea. There we are. 
And I, w- I wonder how it knows. I-, I need to get one of those books now. Uh, I wonder how it knows that you've turned the page. Um, maybe there's just a series of like little prongs connected to micro switches across it. Oh, like a like a yeah, like a pop up book. Yeah, I yeah. Maybe maybe yeah. something. Inside. I mean, that's teaching. clever. That is seriously clever. T- teaching um, you know logic gates and IoT at such a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Something, cool. something I always wanted to do was uh, when I was at school, <laughs> all the way back in in the dark ages, uh, we had these little blocks of uh, logic gates, and you just used to wire them up directly in physics. Um, and I don't know if they they still do anything like that, or if they just do it on computers. But I think having something tactile um, for for this really helps. That's why I like the look of this. Yeah. The- pegboard ones don't you my son's got one um it's like the um electronics um invention kit or something it is but you literally plug um the gates and that together but they don't give you enough to build anything with mm. um you get like one and gate one or gate one and gate and that's it really yeah. um not much else uh, but that book is very cool yeah I like um that. just got buttons you can push and stuff like that i mm-hmm. do like it how much is it i want one uh let's have a look oh come here Pledge first edition twenty seven dollars or more, so not horrific. A triple pack for seventy five, no. so um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. quite good. Yeah, reasonable. That. Well, I, think I'll, I think I'll get one of those. Yeah, but it's probably about sixty dollars to import it, but you know, to ship it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just bring it back with you though, Cliff. It's fine. I could get it shipped to a hotel somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. Uh, so yeah, that was that. Um, uh, RP2040 sound classification, um, machine learning with animal sounds, which I'm working with a client at the moment doing something along these lines. Can't say a great deal about what I'm doing, but that piques my interest because doing that with an RP2040, normally you'd be doing it with, it must be on the other desk over there, um, a far more capable device like a, a Nano 33 BLE or something. Um, yeah, or a Raspberry Pi. Or a Raspberry Pi, yeah, exactly. But uh, on a 2040... I think that that must be. I've not looked at Hello. what this does. That's seriously impressive. That is. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is an RP twenty forty board from Raspberry Pi. Mm-hmm. But obviously, they're saying RP twenty forty. There's lots of uh, not copy boards, but there's lots of boards out there now that support that chip. Um, Primaronia even have their own ones now, don't they? So, yeah. Yeah, that one. There. Uh, stick that up on the thing. Takes it a while to, to update that little link sometimes. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, you need to put them in. The need to put them in the chat as well, Pete. Oh so yeah, Pete, that's true. I've not even got the chat yet. Um, hold on, let me get that. Twitch. <laughs> Half a job to. So make. Maria, why, 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 why Pete's why Pete's sorting out his chat windows and still getting himself sorted? Um, this is the first day back after a summer holiday. Um, it's like having those massive kind of email inbox and you, you know control A and delete to get rid yeah. of more. Um, what is your day to day? What do you do? What is your uh, your day to day thing that you do? Oh, you're you're on mute again, by the way. As well, uh, Maria, or you were. Maria, are you there? Maria, Anastasia, are you there? Hello. Hi. Oh, I can hear you. Now. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> just just saying. What 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 is it? What is your day to day that you do? Um, um, that involves IoT, and electronics, and computer science. Um. This, uh, this period, I deal with my diploma thesis, so I have to deal with uh, some uh, IoT protocols like uh, uh, BLE, like uh, BLE, uh, LoRa, Zigbee. So ha- I have to to read to to learn about them, and uh, I have to um, to build a system. So I am I am trying to uh, every day to learn something new about it. And uh, the last time, ha- the last um, months, uh, I deal with uh, Azure IoT. Uh, I learn new things day by day, and. Um, um, it's IOT and, and the edge riot is it's very huge, but day to day I try to to learn something new. Cool. Have you have you tried Pete's uh, plural site courses? 
and Jurgens and I've forgotten the others now. Um, uh, Reza yeah. and uh, yeah. Reza and uh, I've forgotten the other guy now. There's four of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if yourself and Jurgen did James the Miller. bulk of them. James Miller, I think. James Miller, that's it. Yeah. Have you, have you tried the pro side courses? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm oh, not. You need you need to uh, send uh, Mary Anastasia a, a a code to, to get the pluralsight courses. Yes, yeah, um, give you a thirty day free um, pluralsight code, yes. obviously, to get some of those. We, we need so, to stop that. Yeah, we need to help, help the learning. <laughs> no, you're right. I need to. Uh, I'll give you a link to the. the, the oh, I'll put it in the chat. You know. Um, yeah, I'm updating those. I'm bit, yeah. busy updating them at the minute. Yeah, well, you what? Can you share it the world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. not the code, but the, the, the link to the course. <laughs> oh, link to the course. Yeah. All right, yeah. 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 The code. I'm sure Claude will start that word if you send it to that. Oh, well, they're, no, they'd be fine um, because they're a one-time only code. So um, they'd be happy with oh, me okay. sending as many as I possibly wanted because that's people on the platform then. So uh, they'd be happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Take, take a look. Anyone that's not seen uh, Pete Jurgen Rezzers and uh, James's uh, AZT20 course um, on Pro Size, so absolutely awesome. Um, I've worked my way through uh, nearly all of them, um, and I keep going back over it. And one day I'll pluck up the courage to actually sit the exam. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're awesome courses, and uh, Pete does an amazing job. Uh, I know that um, Pete, you and, and Jurgen have been updating the courses recently, haven't you? So um, to get the new um, OD, the object domain, um, for um for the new updated exam basically yep yeah there's there's constant changes so uh once a quarter normally there'd be there'd be a fair amount of changes but we do go through um more often than that perhaps and we'll strip out bits of the objective domain that that aren't applicable anymore so one of the most most recent ones was there was a section in there about simulating a fleet of devices Uh, and really the questions for that were based around some code on github that microsoft um, kindly went and deprecated, so uh, we had to remove that and the questions. Um, so yeah, a bit of a disappointment when you've got to go and then update your plural site content as well. So I, I, I create questions for the AZ220 exam. I also scrub out ones that that aren't part of it anymore, and uh, then there's a stay current thing. So you know these um, certifications, you often have to to like once a year um, uh, take a little mini exam and keep yourself up to date and and. Uh, recertify yourself so uh, create questions for that as well and the plural site content so i feel kind of like an arbiter for az220 in a way uh, i was there from day one along with a few people in fact uh, from pamela cortez from microsoft's iot team was part of that original process to create the exam it was really cool i really i got so much out of it and learned a whole heap because i mean it's very difficult to know that entire topic well um because it's so broad um it's not quite as broad as the devops exam that's stupidly broad but it it does delve into a lot and it's constantly getting bigger as well so yeah it's uh it's a big old thing um i suppose i better do that I'll save that i'll put that link on the screen for people so uh yeah you're you're both back on mute which is fine i just wanted to make sure that you knew that um, and then that was that one, so that's fine. And we're going back in time here, so they're the more recent links that I found. There's a, there's a bunch of, if, if you know me, you know I love I, um, IoT Central. Um, I, I said, go on about how good this is. It's great for, for contractors who just want to give uh, a, a client a solution and they don't want to have to, to maintain the whole stack afterwards. You can, you can give pretty much everything you need with IoT Central and then the export functionality to be able to send it to uh, storage of your cho- of your choosing outside of that. So, uh, yeah, a ho- heap of new stuff, like a raw di- new raw data view has been enhanced here to give you some extra uh, filtering on the message types um, and uh, IoT Edge system module commands, which is quite handy for, for restarting module and stuff like that, and IoT Edge device monitoring. IoT Edge is one of the newest features uh, of control for uh, IoT Central, and they're constantly um, upgrading that um uh, functionality in there it's fantastic i need to spend a little bit of time looking at that as well um i, I need to play right to center i've not played with it yet um in great detail I've, I've kind of looked at it seen what it is and then kind of moved on um but i do need to to sit and play with it. it's one of the weak areas in my uh, knowledge at the moment um but yeah yeah um and uh 
Pan Jacob, Panikov, um, apologies if I can't pronounce your, your username there, <laughs> um, has said that it would be a good candidate to split that AZ220 into two exams. And yeah, I've, I've mentioned that a few times. Um, but actually, the, they went had to go cap in hand, which is quite an English uh, term to use, but they had to go around all the other departments kind of begging for cash, I think, for uh, from people to be, to go and make that exam in the first place. So um, I'm not not sure what, what sort of take up there is on it. I know that I see all of the messages when people are saying that they're taking my Pluralsight course um, quite often. So I see the, quite a lot of that. But um, yeah, I think... Um, it's uh, Jay Silent Panikov, uh, Pankov. Then in that case, and if it's very depends how silent it is. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah. So that is um, certainly something they should do if they want to keep that exam going. I think there should be a an intermediate and an expert level for that exam, and maybe even a basic beginner level. Uh, but I think just an intermediate and an expert level would be would sufficient to to keep that exam growing. I think it's going to come to that, isn't it? It's going to do. It's getting to that point where it's on the cusp of needing to do that. And I think the kind of expert or next level up, I think we split it into two. Things like the edge um, and all the, the, the serious like um, uh, time series insights and stuff will probably go into the higher level because that's not the sort of thing that um, the average normal non-enterprise user is going to be using. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, yeah, at the moment, I don't think there's enough there for them to... Them split it just yet, but it is right on the cusp of, uh, of being there. So, a marvel using Raspberry Pi. How cool is yeah, this? Lots of that was such a cool that, thing. That is mega. I've not seen that case yeah. before. Um, I don't know if uh, that's like a it, look, it looks like a homemade 3D printed kind of one, doesn't it? It kind of mm -hmm. does, but if you're going to do that, why would you put the Raspberry? Oh, that was pointless, wasn't it? Look, <laughs> click the image and it actually got smaller. Um, if you're going to do that, you wouldn't have thought you'd actually put the Raspberry Pi logo on there. Um, so, but you're right. It kind of does look like a custom yeah. case. I like it. It's, it's all right. It's quite functional, I suppose. But that's mega. Unless it's one, that was made, unless it's one made by the Raspberry Pi team because they were involved in the project, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Possible. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm assuming that this is either like just um, capturing her or capturing motion, but I don't think you'd be able to get much motion in there. So I think maybe it's just scanning her. And, and using that perhaps yeah. but yeah it, it it doesn't say uh what they're actually doing but it's mega anyway i liked that that was pretty cool um yeah yeah i'll just click the link to that in there so you can have, have a closer look yourselves but yeah i liked that that was pretty cool uh go back then and nvidia jets and ai board is ready to go to space now you put space in any conversation and it's always mega cool um but yeah nvidia jets and tx2i so what is that? That's not obviously anything like the Nano. This is this is something different. Um, and often, I, no, I, I, go on. I was going to say I've not heard of it. So uh, Tegra X2 um, sock. I mean, you kind of need um, uh, Johnny Chips here to be able to tell you all about this. Johnny Chips is our resident uh, Nvidia expert. And in fact, uh, on that topic, Johnny Chips on the. I want to say the 16th of September, Thursday the 16th, is uh, going to give a talk on the NVIDIA Jetson and uh, AI at the edge, ML at the edge, uh, at Knots IoT. So do go go and check that out. Um, that would be fantastic. I've seen that talk, uh, and it's really good. He manages to cram a lot into that hour of uh, speaking. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, – I'll stick a link to this in the chat as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure what um, – what it's what it's all about I, uh, often i'll see these links and i'll say oh that's cool we should talk about that on the show but i very rarely actually read all of the detail uh, <laughs> because there's just so much out there it doesn't give me very much time to do it uh next um oh an ssd pi cm4 computer up and running what's that about oh yeah looking for recommendations oh, I, see, I see this one hmm. yeah it's, uh, it's using a um ssd drive um with a, a compute module yes the reason why I, book, I bookmarked this actually is because he was looking for databases to store time series data and I thought ah that conversation would be quite interesting actually and there's quite a few different um, uh, options in there SQLite 3 and MariaDB which are obvious ones uh, Prometheus and Grafana or InfluxDB uh, and I found one as well um, which um, a potential client of mine put me on to um, and I can't remember what it was now I need to, I need to have a look did, 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 did. I'm trying to think of one that um, oh, I forgot what it's called now. One I suggest, but it's gone. No, it's completely gone. 
Uh, SQL Lite is uh, is obviously one because um, then that means you just use normal SQL Lite commands. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of cool. And there's a .NET version of it as well um, if you use it. Um, SQL Lite.NET. Um, ah, there we go. The one the I'm of, time man. scale was the one I I uh, was told about. So if I just stick this on the screen, okay. never heard of that one. No, I hadn't. So it's Postgres SQL, but it's um, the best of both worlds out of a uh, uh, no SQL uh, database. But it is SQL, um, but it's specifically meant for time series data, um, and yeah, it gives you this massive performance boost over um, anything, pretty much. So and there's integrations here for. Uh, for Azure as well, so you can go and you can read about that. Let me just stick that in the um, do that. Uh, I can do this as well because it's small. Uh, so yeah, go and check that out. I need to have a look. I don't have time to look at all these things, but this sounds awesome as a way of of using something that's not SQL Server, but also not having to get into something that's uh, Cosmos DB, for instance. So it's like a, a halfway house between those two things. Uh, and you can either host it yourself, it's all open source, or you can host it with them. Um, so yeah, well worth well worth having a squiz at that one. So yeah, time scale. Um, oh yeah, and, and while I was in there as well, there was a few other things that um, came up as part of that um, conversation. Da, da, da. Let's go over here. If, you, if you're looking at uh, Postgres SQL, I'll, I'll put this in the chat because I just found it. There's an awesome book um, written by Rob Connery. I'm not sure anyone knows Rob Connery. Um, he's, he's quite well known uh, as a speaker uh, and that, and he's uh, nuts about space uh, as well. Um, but he, he does a lot of teaching around um, Postgres. But he's written this book, um, A Curious Moon, which is phenomenally good. Uh, it's a story about a young data scientist um, starting out in the world of being a data scientist um, and learning Postgres. Postgres. Hmm. Um, he uses real life NASA data um, about the uh, mission to Saturn and how I won't spoil the story, but uh, how, how they come about um, now launching another um, mission to Enceladus, which is one of the moons of Saturn. Um, but yeah, it's a phenomenal book. If you want to learn Postgres SQL, um, reading this book is a fun, interesting, engaging story. <laughs> and you'll come out the end of it knowing Postgres SQL, especially if you do what I did, which was actually follow along. Um, and you can download uh, all the data from uh, the NASA website. So it's not even his website. It gives you a link to the NASA website to download all the data, and you, you basically build a database using the NASA data and go through it all um, along with the story. It's really, really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, so, yeah, it's an awesome book. I can't remember the price, but it's well worth it. Um, and if you want to learn a bit about, data, uh, about computer science, he's got a few books um, on uh, computer science as well. Um, which teaches you computer science from uh, effectively giving you a computer science or CS degree, but without actually going to do the degree. Um, uh, what's it called? It calls um, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. No, uh, yeah, imposter. Um, so uh, you can look at his uh, his website, and there's another book called uh, Imposter, um, and he basically takes you through um, the whole uh, the 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 O. The big O and everything else, um, and all that sort of stuff about, um, uh, yeah, com side. There you go. Um, but yeah, he's an, an interview book as well. But his books are really, really well written. Um, they're written assuming you know nothing, hmm. and uh, take you through to actually being an expert. Well, not an expert, but you know, known enough to be dangerous. Um, but yeah, well worth a look. Um, Rob, if you ever watch this, you know, you can send a free book my way. <laughs> Yeah, happy to review it online and um, and, and plug it on the show and all those things. So uh, there you go. Um, actually, on on that sort of subject, Maria, obviously English isn't your first language here, is it? Greek Greek will be no. your first language. How do you find? Obviously, all the technical information or a lot of it is going to be in English. How do you find learning new stuff when English isn't your first language? Um. Now it's very easy for me to um, to read in and and learn new things in English uh, because I have uh, used to it uh, from the first year of my studies back uh, to to th 2015. So uh, with uh, Google Translate, 
slowly, slowly, slowly. Now I feel very comfortable with uh, uh, reading uh, in English, but I have to um, to excel my my speaking English. So slowly, slowly, I I think that uh, one day um, I feel English like uh, I hope like my mother language. <laughs> well, I mean, your English is way better than my Greek, so <laughs> <laughs> I can speak a bit of Spanish, but uh, I know no Greek uh, at all. So that's a difficult language to go and learn as well because uh, it's a completely different alphabet, obviously. So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's difficult. It's interesting, but I think certainly the docs, Microsoft docs, there's there's um, regionalization, localization for for all the different languages for the docs. I think, isn't there? Is Greek will be one of yes. them, won't it? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, some uh, of the docs uh, are in Greek, but uh, now I have uh, used to read uh, in English for for this topic for IELTS for uh, computer engineering. Um, so this isn't the problem now for me. <laughs> That's good. And it... also, it's also, it's a case of if the docs are in Greek, Spanish, you know, whatever language, the code section is still going to be in US English, isn't it? So, um, you know, you can read the doc, and you've got them mentally, so I can't speak any languages. I struggle with English. <laughs> um, yeah, so... That's not even my first language because I struggle with that. So, yeah. Ah, oh, geez, yeah. Dribbling and dribbling. That's just about my first language. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was interesting. Um, um, onwards. Uh, there's this Bellina um, IoT management gateway software that um, I found as well, where uh, I think you get your first ten devices free. It says here. Um, but it allows you to, to dial in and get um, all the information about how your devices are running and graphs of performance and stuff like that. I'm not doing a very good job here of, of, of showing you. What I, I, use the Bellina, I use the Bellina app. Uh, I think it's called Bellina SD, I think it's called. Um, I use the Bellina app for burning uh, SD cards with the Raspberry Pi image um, because you can format it and burn it correctly um, than that so i do use their, their their software for that um but i've not seen this cloud i can only imagine it's a way of connecting remotely to a device and um doing over the air updates maybe i don't know yeah i think um you you run an os an entire operating system on the device a Bellina os on the device and then you're right i think it's essentially docker underneath as i think as far as i remember when i was reading it um, and so it's a bit like IoT Edge, uh, but it gives you that whole management structure on top of it as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it uses containers. Look, so uh, then you have the Bellina engine, okay. and its kernel, uh, Docker base image. So yeah, it's and then yeah, all the updates are all handled. Device provisioning is all handled for you. Code deployments all handled. So um, yeah, it, it just, and another thing that I need to spend some time and have a look at just time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, certainly the person I was speaking to was raving about how good this was. Um, not massively cheap to run either. Um, that's the downside. But um, so for twenty devices, it was one hundred and nine dollars a month. So um, wow. yeah, it's, it, was, it was reasonably expensive, I think. But um, yeah, not horrible, I don't think. But it was. But on top of that, you you pay two dollars per device, e um, extra per device after that. So it's not another yeah. hundred and nine. It's just two dollars two dollars two dollars it's the initial startup yeah, yeah exactly yeah. i think if you if you have enough devices is there, is there a, oh you get the first 10 free so you get like a a, a kind of you know a, a getting to, to to get your hooks mm -hmm. yep yeah yeah exactly okay. so that was cool um and then the final one in that list was uh, this six fab which i've not heard of before and they make these connectivity hats for raspberry pi and, and other things as well so um so this has got um, all of the, the 4G, 3G uh, stuff built into it and they even uh, give you their own SIM card which I think their newest version of that is going to allow you to be able to um, to connect to any network so it'll shift across networks depending on which one's best which is quite cool so I quite you got the link for that one Pete. Yep. Uh, that's like I've not seen but actually might help on my project <laughs> <laughs> hey this is why we do the show 
uh, this sort yeah. of stuff. So um, yeah, LT cellular modem kit. Um, so yeah, I'd not heard. Of, yeah, 180 countries, 300 networks, cool. single billing. Uh, pay only for the active sins. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite cool actually. So I thought people might find that. Hopefully, hopefully you can use you can use uh, you can use Pi Zero as well. Um, I wonder if uh, if you can just stuff your own um, SIM card in rather than actually use their one. I need to look at that. Oh, you probably can. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I need to look at that. Where did you see that they do um, the Pi Zero? Hardware. It says um, where they got a picture of the cellular hardware bit on the oh, home page. And it says there anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's it. Uh, so, um, interesting. Very interesting. I like that. Cool. So that was that one. Um, and then, yeah, so that was the talk about all of the um, uh, different lot of influx in Grafana. I, I've not played with Grafana either. <laughs> I've not. No. No. Oh, I wish I had more time just to play with these things. Uh, SQL Lite. Yeah, I need, need, no, need more days in my week. Yeah. Yeah. Just get paid to do this instead. That would be nice. Uh, Zigbee Ethernet, ESP Ethernet, ESP32 Ethernet Wi Fi and BLE Gateway with optional Zigbee connectivity. So that was that looked quite interesting. Let me stick a link to that one in the chat in case anybody's interesting. Designed to fit in a Raspberry 4 enclosure. So yeah, that's the ESP32 there, and it's got reset and flash yeah. and FTDI. So they're, they're, they're still in the 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 board layout of a Raspberry Pi four, by the looks of it, but you're using the ESP32. Mm. So yeah, yeah. that's clever. Yeah, I quite like that. Um, and it is it it's an ESP32 <laughs> you've been playing with with Nano Framework as well, isn't it? It is. Yes, um, I've been using these um, these ESP32 CAM modules. Um, but I've been getting the MB one, which has got this little board at the back to save you having to use an FTDI um, thing with Bob. But otherwise, you need one of these FTDIs, uh, which takes the uh, the connection from your PC, the USB, and turns it into a, um, a, a serial um, port, which plugs, which goes to the um, ESP CAM because it doesn't have uh, any USB on the actual oh. ESP32 CAM modules. Um, so you need one of these to then talk serially to the TXRX on the board, or you can pay a few extra dollars or pounds and get the MB version, which has got this board, um, mm. which you can use to program it. And then obviously, I'm not going to do it because it's plugged in. Actually, I'll unplug it. Um, you can just take the boards apart right there. So um, it allows you to... Um, and it also breaks out the uh, the boot and reset buttons on the bottom as well. Mm. But these are kind of cool little boards. Um, so I, I use these, um, and, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, but I'm working on a project um, where I need a little camera module. So there we go. Yeah. Uh, I bought some of these recently, <laughs> so I'm going to hold it up to both different cameras. Um, so, yeah, bunch of them as well. Um, um, right in there. So yeah, a bunch of those cameras and yeah, all sorts. Yeah, they're cheap. It was like five quid for five of them. Um, yeah. so it was cheaper than buy one to buy five. Stupidly. So I need to uh, have a play with that. I want to see if I can hook that up to that uh, BLE Sense board um, and do some uh, vision at the edge uh, on that. That board's amazing. To be fair, what it can do. Uh, I've just started playing with Edge Impulse as well. See what I can do with that. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's going to be fun when I get it, get going with that. Uh, yeah, here we are talking about uh, exactly that look, Edge Impulse and Saving Elephants. This was quite cool. Uh, so some, there we are. So the Nano BRE 33 cents and a LoRaWAN hotspot gateway uh, and a bunch of other stuff, capacitors and stuff like that. And uh, this guy is using this to, to recognize elephants, um, which is quite a cool idea because uh, they're in a lot of trouble. More than 350 elephants yes. died in just a few months in Botswana in 2020. So, yeah, this is it's a fantastic cause. Anything that people can do to to, to uh, have an ecological impact using IoT is, is always a worthwhile cause. So, um, yeah, I'll stick a link to that one in the chat too. Nope. I have seen that there, um, there is a same project about uh, whales. Really? Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. And okay. now, now they recognize some of uh, the whales. 
and they called with um, uh, specific names, and it's very, very interesting. I was hoping to be able to find. <laughs> What's that come out? Very cool. Uh, yeah, I would have thought that that would might have come up. Yeah, like, you'd have to you'd have to dig out the link for that. Um, Maria Anastasia and, okay. and send it share, 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 share it in the chat in the, uh, in, the in the ninja thingy um, Maria Anastasia um, there's a little chat window you share it in there and then um, Pete, can, Pete can bring it up on the main screen okay I can do that right. um, and while Maria Anastasia is doing that um, uh, new battery technology here so longer lasting batteries and again I've not actually read this but let's have a look what's it saying about that uh, da, 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 da. Is this the glass batteries? Uh, or is this the new Tesla yeah, look, ones? Let's have a look. What's it say? Uh, all sorts of interesting applications for this. Uh, Holy Grail of quantum mechanics. Uh, topological axion <laughs> insulator. <laughs> Whatever the heck that is. A unique state of quantum matter which could only be predicted in theory but has now been achieved practically. Its axion state was realised by creating atom by atom a small two-dimensional crystalline structure made up of mag magnes bismuth telluride in a solid state chip. I don't I don't understand any of that. I've got to be honest. No, I don't either. Um, but no. uh, if somebody wants to, to have a look at that, uh, then you can explain it to us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite sure. I'm certainly not a quantum physicist. I, I did quantum physics as a module at university and failed it. Uh, it was really interesting, but um, I think I got 39% rather than 40 and failed it. But <laughs> I'm oh, not, no. Yeah, uh, <laughs> vicious. Um, close yet, so far away. I know, exactly, that's right. Uh, funnily enough, if I'd have got, if I'd have passed that, I'd have got a 2 1 uh, in my degree, just that one exam. So I missed out on a 2 1 by 1%, essentially. Um, uh, yeah, it's funny. Pyberoni's twenty. There is, there, is, there is the glass, the glass batteries, which is the guy that originally invented um, um, uh, the uh, lipo batteries um, back in the sixties, seventies. Um, Professor, is it Phil Good? I think his name is. Um, he's now um, he's in his nineties now, and he now uh, lectures um, in Austin, Texas. Um, in the US, and um, or he was until whether he's retired or not, I don't know. Um, but he's invented this um, glass um, dielectric uh, between the two anode and cathodes, um, which stops dendrites growing across the uh, across and uh, shorting the battery out, which is what kills your battery. Oh. Um, so, uh, and in a side note, we used to with all the, the power tools when I was in engineering, we used to uh, we used to clear the dendrites by. Uh, by uh, getting the welder, the arc welder, and uh, standing well back <laughs> and just blacking the battery across the, the positive and negative terminals, and the, the, the shock would cause the dendrites to burn off, and it would give the battery um, back most of its charge capacity again. Um, I do not recommend it because quite a few of them went kaboom, um, but we used to do it around the back of one of the store containers. Um, and yeah, um, it was fun to send the apprentices round back when I was a manager. And so, right, go and, go and clear the dendrites out of the battery and they look at you with a physical <laughs> look. Um, but yeah, so uh, you, you know, hopefully show them a couple where they didn't go bang. Um, but yeah, when they go bang, they make a big mess. Um, yeah, so I don't recommend it, but it's a good way of clearing a battery. Uh, you really, really need oh, to. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, Things you do in exactly. engineering. Right? Uh, more, uh, Pimeroni stuff, uh, Pimeroni Plasma 2040. So that, this is, yeah, Pimeroni is awesome. Uh, they keep emptying my credit card. I don't know what it is. They keep, yeah. keep stealing all the money. Direct debit directly from your bank account there, just straight <laughs> to them. Um, uh, but yeah, this is for uh, these LED strips. Uh, they've got a driver for the for the 2040 for that that you can write in. Oh, okay. Life and so, um, again, is that using the, um, I wonder if that's using the, um, Oh, what do they call it on the on the RP twenty forty? The um, you got the main clock cycle, and then you've got this other. Oh, what's it called? Come on, Pete. Oh uh, yeah, the uh, the PIO, the program programmable PIO. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah. it. That's the one. Yeah, the PIO. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you're using the PIO to to release the main chip to carry on doing um, its own operation. Uh, Be interesting. Yeah, to see. I don't know. Can I get to this without using AMP? Oh, I can. There, that's better. There we are. That's a better link. Uh, the other one um, is the the mobile link, so that's a little bit easier to scroll through. So, um, yeah, maybe difficult to know. I suppose you have to have a look. But um, 
yeah, anything you can do to do that. Uh, you got a few GPIOs. Didn't probably doesn't say a great deal about that level of um, detail, but yeah, yeah, you can never have enough LED strips in your life. <laughs> no, no. It looks like it's using the uh, having a quick look over it. It's using the uh, I squared C, so it looks like it's um, it's, out, it's coming out the S Steam QT connector. So um, it's using the I squared C, but there's no reason why you can't get the PIO to talk to that I squared C and, and do it anyway. But yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I like that. Um, that. I was reading a report just yesterday, I think, saying that COVID has killed business cards, and no, it's not. Because you're just going to give everybody one of these instead. So, give them a, uh, a a business card that doubles as a video game console. I like that. Uh, slightly more expensive, obviously, than uh, than the fifty p for a thousand or whatever it works out to be for business cards these days. But yeah, my sort of business card that is. Um, I like that. So uh, I, I'll put a link to that in there as well. I just keep forgetting to put links. Some of these links look massive in the chat as well. It's stupid. Uh, Arduino files treasure, yeah. So this guy had hooked up a uh, uh, metal detector out of an Arduino, which I think is a really cool idea. Um, that is, yeah. I, I would have never thought of doing that. Um, yeah, look at that. So non-ferrous. Some people have far too much time on their hands. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> I like. I haven't said that though. It's it's a great way to learn. If you got like an idea to do something, yeah. it's a great like way to learn IoT. It's like well, I'm going to build one of these and just keep going until you. You build it mm -hmm. and it works. It's true. Um, you know, just like you know, just just build a hand and make it work. Like the robot down there. Yeah, the robot. Yeah. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. There he is. There's the robot. Yeah, you know, it's 3D printed. Yep. Um, so yeah. Um, just. I got too much junk on my desk. I think. Yeah, you've seen behind me. <laughs> I've got a stack of books here that uh, I need to read. Uh, when I'm going to get time to read all of those, I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I got a, a bunch of books as well um, before the holidays and thought, so, right, excellent, it's holidays. I get to sit still and read books. And yeah, it didn't yeah. happen. You've got a family so. apart from anything, dude. <laughs> yeah. Maria, Maria Anastasia, tell me, um, obviously you like IoT and things like that. What devices or projects have you worked on? Um, I I deal with... Uh, a lot of um, Arduino and the Raspberry Pi as my basic um, uh, modules. And what else? Um, e ESP32 for, uh, for extra... Uh, Wi-Fi, yes. Um, for my diploma thesis, as I said, I I use uh, Zigbee, Zigbee and Bluetooth uh, modules and uh, LoRa uh, LoRa module. And lately, I I I'm using also uh, expect of uh, except of Arduino. I'm using um, ah, my my head uh, stuck. <laughs> I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. It's like Arduino, but um, ah, I have to find it. Do it. Uh, it's it's a nucleo um, um, nucleo. I, d I don't remember the the model, but uh, it's uh, it's like Arduino with more uh, port ports. Wonder if it's this. Mm, I think it's. Oh, it's Japanese. Uh... Oh, it's ST. Yes, yes, ST thirty two, I think. Ooh. And one with uh, Laura. It's a. Uh, is that, is that programmed in, in C as well, or is that? Uh, yes. Uh, Sometimes you can also um, uh, program a uh, program with uh, Arduino ID. So. Okay. Yes. Uh, and it has uh, many ports. 
It's, uh, I think it's uh, more, maybe more professional. I, I don't, I don't, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I like it. I actually find the link. Uh, I've put it in the. Uh, for, I think. Yeah, because it's got it's got that one you you posted, Pete. It's got two um, G and four G connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got quite a bit of stuff on board. Um, it's quite an interesting board actually. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean LTE. Um, it's got a good operating temperature, minus thirty to plus eighty five as well. So you can stick it outside and not have to worry too much about it. Um, yeah, I like it. That looks like sort of the Arduino compatible pins at the top. Yeah. Maybe. And then these look uh, either like two lots of Raspberry Pi style GPIO on there. Yeah, yeah, dual headers. Yeah. Heaps of, you're right, heaps of, uh, of IO on it. So what's it actually say? Is that is that a, um, looking close at the image there, is that a, 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 a dev board underneath, the whiteboard being the dev board? And the, mm, yeah, you might be right. The actual, the, the, it, can you see an edge connector there uh, in the centre of the image, can't you? Just to the left of the L610 chip. Yeah, there where your mouse is. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it's like, um, that's the actual board and that's like, like the dev element of it. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, cool. I like, I like it. it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. Need, need to look a bit deeper at that as... Uh, as I get time, when I find time. There's a problem. I, I, I watch this show, and I know we're talking about stuff that we play with, but then what happens is I end up with a massive long list of the same. You're closing the tabs, Pete, and I'm opening them to look at them later. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've got like like 20 tabs open now of all things that I need to look at later to remind myself what's going on. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's next? Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, right. Uh, so that was cool. I like that. Yeah, good good call there. I like that uh, that board there. Uh, oh, these are cool. I mean, uh, we, we spoke just briefly there a, a while back, but I love uh, STEM in schools and anything you can do to yes. get to get uh, you know, kids and uh, young adults into STEM subjects is fantastic. And they're doing these micro bit virtual Olympics and uh, Cecilia Hillway here is, is doing some awesome stuff. Uh, in fact, I wonder if I can click on it and see if she's got some more. Um, uh, let's do the, oh, there we are. There's a pinned tweet. Look at that. How cool is that? So I made a little wooden cardboard um, mashup of a robot arm way back in the day when I first started playing with Arduino. It's still up there, um, uh, and I had fun with that. But this just that just puts it to shame. I love that. Awesome! How oh, cool that is! That's really cool. Yeah. Yes. So she's doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, can I do media on there and see if there's some stuff? Uh, Da, da, da. That's some sort of a dog, uh, maybe. Loads of hands-on, yeah, loads of hands-on cool stuff, uh, which yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, clearly a good artist as well with oh, all the yeah. drawing and colouring. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, humming, we like. hummingbird bit. Um, I like that. All those different things. Look at that. Wow, <laughs> love it. I need this teacher at my daughter's school. <laughs> we need that we need that teacher at all schools yeah that's true yes yeah loving all of that so yeah let me just um uh, send you a link to uh uh twitter here da, da, da. there we are so yeah go and check out cecilia she looks awesome uh hierarchical uh, oh yeah look um somebody wrote a uh a, a paper on hierarchical control of visually guided movements in 3D printed robot arms. If you want to just like go and not, if you can't sleep. <laughs> Say then. that again? Yeah, no. Um, Say it three times without blinking, you know. Yeah, that one. A full, there's a, a full white paper here on, on how you can control 3D printed robot arms. Uh, someone has taken our 3D printed robot arm, Cliff, and just taken it to the nth degree. Uh, somebody tagged me in it. Uh, and it was just like, oh my lord! I mean, look at this. That is some some hardcore stuff uh, yeah. about three D printed robot arms. I'm not going to scroll through all of that, but yeah, if you want to read it, I, I, I think I'll, I think I'll stick to our, our little arm uh, <laughs> and uh, our, our Raspberry Pi dot net um, <laughs> code that makes it work. Yeah, so much easier. I like that. 
Um, no. Raspberry Pi. If, if, uh, by the way, if you're new to the channel and you like the arm and you want to play with the arm, um, it's all 3D printable. Um, and all you need after 3D printing is four um, little cheap servos, um, little 9G servos. Um, no other parts. Um, servo screws hold it all together. Um, and you can get all the details how to build this robot, how to program it using the Raspberry Pi.net from Pete's um, GitHub. I'm sure he'll share it. Um, he's already done it. There you go. <laughs> Pete it. Um, it's a great project. We've run a couple of, couple of workshops on we, Pete, yep. uh, with this. Um, I've shared it with my son's school so they can put it into a co club when they start the summer. Um, I'm going to print a bunch of these off to give to uh, the school so they can do it as part of their co club. Um, so, yeah, it's awesome. Um, it even uses Signal R so you can control it from uh, from across the webs, um, which is awesome. Yep. Or even so. with an Oculus Quest, which is what I've done. <laughs> you can, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, so yeah. Oh, um, was I wasn't even sharing my screen while I was doing all of that. By the way, no one actually pointed it out in the chat. Um, but I'm not not watching the live stream. That's why. No, exactly. Well, no one on the in the chat mentioned it either. So Excuse me. yeah, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, the links are in there. You can you can you can go and check them out. Oh, that's a shame. Um, but tell you what, I, I want to go back to Cecilia though and and show you that because that was just awesome. Do, do, do. Yeah, so so go and check uh, Cecilia's stuff out because uh, some of the stuff that she's done. This this is this is what I, we were we were, didn't realise we were meant to be here. This is what I was showing earlier about Cecilia and, and the the dragon that she made there. So um, yeah, this, just some of the stuff that, that she's done. Dean's saying he didn't realise he was meant to be. It's just <laughs> yeah. listening. You describe it. Dean's been along quite a few times. We would have thought you'd recognise this. We're relying on you, man. Yeah. It. Well, he does point out when he can't hear us, so that's really important. Yeah, yeah, there is that. Yeah, yeah. Because then he, he can't see you or hear you describe it. That's yeah, why. that's true. That's true. Uh, Raspberry Pi weather clock here. Um, uh, and it's already ten, uh, five, well, five past ten almost. So uh, we'll probably wrap up in the not too distant future and then come back to a lot of the links that I've been saving up. But uh, anyway, I like the look of this uh, this this weather clock that uh, this person's created, uh, Eli. Ooh. So it, yeah, it's a little clock, and they tells you what time. Five minutes of sunny. Yeah, so it's telling you at what time of day it's going to be in what weather, which I thought was a really good way of, of describing the day. So um, yeah, I like that. That was, that was quite cool, and then different screens that you can you can flick through as well. So yeah, it's uh, cool. pretty cool. I like that touch screen as well. Look. Oh yeah. Dean, Dean's now saying it's much better now you share the screen. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. Uh, I don't know how long that was. Uh, About an hour too late, but never mind. I did share. I, I switched across when we were talking to, to Maria and Anastasia about the stuff that oh, she was okay. doing. So, yeah, that was good. Uh, eight awesome DIY projects to upgrade your car. Um, and I remember when I was doing electronics and electrical engineering at college, and the lecturers would always be upgrading their cars. Uh, and I've not, it's not something I've ever really done. Uh, to my car, I think mainly because I don't want to break it. I eat that car. <laughs> put, put lots of LEDs underneath my car when I was a teenager and I was working at Ford. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah, but you can only get red and green LEDs then because that's all you could get. So I'm that old. Um, yeah, germanium or arsenic, they were the choices you had. Yes. Um, so red or, red or green, and that was it. Yep. Yeah, and big, you know, five mil kind of jobbies. Uh -huh. But yeah. Uh, me and my friend put loads of money underneath our cars and wired them all up. And, yeah, <laughs> got flat batteries real quick. Really. Yeah, uh, uh, DJ Tanz says I wanted to use a Pi three to make a car stereo fully touch screen. Yeah, and in fact there are projects out there for exactly that. And in fact people are putting then uh, Google um, Auto in there uh, because you can install that I think on a Raspberry Pi uh, with your touch screen and you get maps and, and everything with that. I think it's quite cool. I don't think it's mature enough yet, but. Um, remote start. We, we, Go on. we we did another one. We did was um, for our HND uh, electronics project. We designed um, and you know did all the board layouts and everything else um, for a uh, hydraulic system to make the car dance music. <laughs> um, which we never built it. Sadly, me and my friend, uh, me and my friend Paul, uh, often talk about you know we should we should build it. We should build it. Um, you know, dig out our old manuals and see if it actually work. But Lecture said it would work, but whether it would actually work, I don't know. But it looked oh, kind of cool. I like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make the car dance. Fast and furious. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm desperate. I've been thinking about making one of these for ages, and I spotted that as part of this post here, where you could have an LED matrix in on your parcel shelf, and you can say thank you to to courteous drivers, like they've said there. Uh, of course. Yeah, but then you're, then you're touching your phone when driving, which is illegal. So as long as you don't do it in front of a police officer, you could. Yeah. Well, you could put it on the Google Auto touchscreen, and you can do that. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah perfect. You can do that. Which means you can write, you can write a Xamarin app to do that. You could. Because Xamarin supports Google, Google Auto. Yeah, or even better, you could put a a BLE thirty three cents, and you could recognise the words are coming out of your actual mouth and tell it to do it. You could. <laughs> you could. Uh, this look, Cliff. This reminded me of you. This reminded me of you. Look, uh, heads yeah. up display. Because yeah, I know you get that in your jet, don't you? We we get that in the summer, mate. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to see us have a look. Uh, Dean would be okay with the autopilot and his Tesla. We, yeah, you know what? Um, my, my two sons forced me to take them to the Tesla garage today to look at the Tesla because they, 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 they both really want a Tesla. Um, and they're trying to persuade uh, me and mum to uh, to buy a Tesla for the next family car. Um, but yeah, we were chatting to the sales guy about the autopilot and uh, he, even he agreed with me that they don't think the autopilot is going to come to UK or Europe anytime soon. Especially seeing there was another accident recently where it, it crashed into a police car. Oh. In the US, <laughs> it seems, seems to get confused by flashing lights on the top of a car. Um, it's been multiple instances now. Um, thankfully, no one was in, injured or hurt, um, you know, or even worse. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, it would be nice to see if it could come to the UK. Um, it does look kind of cool. Jeez, I, yeah. I just just seems me aren't they mega expensive Teslas? Like hugely expensive, like a hundred grand or something ridiculous. No, no, the, the the Model Three is around down around forty is now. Um, oh. Yeah, it's you know, and the Model Y, I'm told, is is coming out next year. I don't know. I don't know what the Y is, but it means you can now spell sexy, which is, is <laughs> you know, you got the S. The the three was meant to be an E, uh, yeah. but Mercedes Mercedes got up that because it's like the E class. Uh -huh. They said no, you can't have that. So they turned it around and made it a three. It's got the X and the Y, so you've got sexy. <laughs> um, yeah, Dean, Dean says forty k for the Model Three. I believe it's just over forty, though, which means you have to pay some luxury car tax if it's over forty thousand, uh, which is never nice. No. Um, but yeah, I just need another thirty-nine thousand hundred ninety-five pound, and I'll have one. Yay! Yeah, that'll about <laughs> work. Yeah, exactly. But if, you, yeah. if that percept job comes off properly, then uh, you'll be you'll be rocking and rolling then. Whoops! Oh yeah, yeah, for the client, yeah, yeah, I might earn ten pound fifty from that, so I'll be good. What is this one, Pete? This, yeah, this looks interesting. Looks cool. Let me just stick this. Is, it, is this is this the uh, finally getting the suit from Alien? Yeah, pretty much. So uh, develop. There we are. So let's just click that. Let's fast forward a little bit to past all the preamble. What's he doing? Auto arm. This is cool. Oh, I like this. This is right on my street. <laughs> Just need to stick uh, stick handy on the end. Oh, be good. That is really cool. I like that a lot. Ah, oh, look at that. Yeah, that is really cool. I don't, is it all 3D printed? Or? It looks like it is. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a ghost arm. <laughs> it's using the Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero as well. Um, uh, various microphones controlled by Tinsy 4.1s, which I use like loads of. Um, yeah, and it's all 3D printed as well. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Like yeah, the, the Tinsy boards, if you've not, um, I've got some here somewhere. Um, I normally have them all over the place. They're here somewhere. Um, there you go. Um, it's basically a little Arduino compatible board. I've I've got I'm I've fitted a um, RJ45 connector for connecting to the Ethernet on top there, um, and it's got a, a an SD card slot. Um, but yeah, they're they're fantastic little boards. I use loads of them um, for client projects. Mm. Um, that one's dead, sadly. You were waiting for the Wilderness Labs board to to get Bluetooth or something to try and upgrade handy with that, weren't you? Yeah, I, I was playing with it. I was playing with it um, kind of during the summer holidays. They've got an out an update five point beta 5.2 i think they're up to now so the, the BLE works um 
and I've been playing with it and trying to connect it to Handy um, to see if I can get it uh, working. But um, yeah, it just needs a bit more time and effort. Uh, I just think I've not had really. Fair enough. Uh, just as an aside, uh, I was playing with this uh, while I was busy updating the exam. There's a there's a, a nice um, learning path here about Azure Digital Twins uh, on the Docs site. So uh, I love Microsoft Docs is fantastic, and this learn uh, section of the Docs where you can run through a set of tutorials uh, is really good. It's really, it's written by the IoT team, so you know it's on point. Um, and yeah, I ran through all of that. It's really good. Um, uh, content in there so go and check that out as well uh what was this Great my my my, uh, my mr 14 is using um the learn platform um to learn um web development as part of his dv uh, awards because he needs to learn a skill um so he's using the um the learn platform um which is kind of oh, cool i like it so, another one for you look cliff yeah. yep look at that how cool that is, is that? Very dexterous, isn't it? That's very dexterous. <laughs> That's mega, isn't it? Yeah. That's cool. I like that. So I mean this I like that one. You couldn't find an internship, this this uh, poor dude here. So he built an AI controlled robot hand, so uh, Why not? Yeah. Media pipe and pre controlled neural network, pre trained neural network to identify hand joint coordinates. Oh, yeah. I love, love, love the way the cardboard box that it's all bolted to is moving around all over the desk <laughs> yeah. as well. A bit, bit like your robot, Pete, when you had it on the desk, uh, it kept falling over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. Uh, go, that. Gone to all that trouble to make an awesome bit of kit and you glue it to a rock, do it, glue it to a cardboard box. <laughs> you know. <And? laughs> That's all good. I like it. Yep. I like it. Uh, oh, did you see this um, by Dave Gloverlock bringing new life to the Altair 8800 on Azure Sphere? So, hooked up an Altair wow. 8800 to an Azure Sphere Altair. device. So it's the, it's, that's the beginning <laughs> of computing, as we know, from the homebrew club. Mm -hmm. Yep, all the way back there. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, this Altair 8800, I think, wasn't that what Bill Gates released his first version of BASIC on or something? I think it was. Yeah. Yes, the Altair 8800 was. Um, um, uh, 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 released onto that, um, and it was all it was done um, free initially as part of the um, as part of the uh, homebrew club, as is it was named back then. Yep. But yeah, Microsoft's first product, in fact. Yep. Uh, Bill Gates, and there. Paul Allen's uh, Altair Basic, amazing. And the, the Altair was also the start of um, start of uh, was getting involved in um, computing as well and building um, the the original Apple. Um, Apple One, um, which also run um, uh, Basic as well, or Microsoft Basic, mm -hmm. um, as it was back then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, until eighty eighty. I like that. So that was cool. Um, and uh, if you've not heard of um, uh, girls, girls into, into coding here, then uh, go and check them out. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, and so they they were run. This is an old link now. They were running a Kickstarter. I think it's finished by now. Um, yeah, so that's already finished. So, um, but go and support them uh, in any way you can. You've got you've got your uh, your Able Wang um, T-shirt on. Yep. I'm still waiting for mine to arrive. I don't know what happens, but um, very sad to hear about Able. I, I thought it was a, a fantastic teacher. Yeah. Um, of things um, dot net, dot net and DevOps and Kubernetes and stuff like that. Um, but if you bought a T-shirt like myself and, and obviously Pete has as well. Um, I've gone for the blue one, Pete. Um, but if you bought a T-shirt, then um, those the, the 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 funds from that um, also went to Girls in the Coding as well. Um, so yeah, a, a fantastic um, cause, and uh, yeah, in the way of um, yeah supporting Abel and his family. Fully agree. Uh, table tennis coach using Tiny ML. Uh, <laughs> is there a video? Here we are. As, as, as an aside, uh, we've got a table tennis thing. It's a table tennis table. Yeah, that's right. Um, the Wii ball is a, is a lockdown thing. And uh, Mr. 12, my 12-year-old son, um, is now beating me left-handed. Um, <laughs> mainly because he, he's fractured his right hand while mountain biking when we was on holiday this summer. So we're playing and he's, he's mullering me, um, absolutely trouncing me. And he's playing left-handed. Um, yeah. Not happy, so I think I'm gonna to have to build one of these, Pete. 
uh, if you share the link and, uh, and then I should be able to beat you. I, I think. I agree. No, I'll, yeah. give, I'll give you an update on the, on the, where we go. You have to beat him while you're cooking yeah. the dinner or burning it, as you quite like burning, to point Yeah, I, I tend to burn the dinner. <laughs> yeah. I was burning the barbecue over at my sister's earlier on tonight. Uh, this isn't the right video. Yeah, there was a far better video of this. Uh, I don't know where that video disappeared to, but uh, with the actual yeah, robot. I'm, I'm going to build, have to build one of these to beat him. Uh, robot arm, look, look, look. This looks very, um, very like the robot arm that I've got in VR as part of my talk. Actually, this robot arm here. Yeah. Um, so it's a six-axis Brachio robot arm. Uh, but I like the look of that. I'd like to to hook that up to .NET and make that work. Uh, yeah. That was cool. I've got a link here as well. Somebody uh, posted two lines of code that makes uh, robot arms move nice and fluidly. Um, so they start off not as fast as, as you'd expect, but they slow down towards the end with a, a nice curve. It was quite a cool little post. So nice, nice ramp up, ramp down, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know where. That's a link there somewhere. Uh, what was this about? The growth of uh, AI at the edge stuff. So edge AI analytics, that one is. I can't quite remember why I, why I bookmarked that, but it's all interesting stuff. So I'll stick the link in there for you anyway. Uh, yeah, and, and then uh, there's a whole heap more links as well. Um, uh, oh, here we are. This is the. Um, let me just get that on the screen down here. This is the. I think it was this. How to make robots move. Um, that's a bit scary looking. Uh, but this. It's a bit like um, um, Terminator when he's had his face melted off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. So this guy 3D printed this um, and, and just a couple of lines of code. So it takes the previous reading and it takes 95% of the previous one and 5% of the new one. And it does that gradually and you get this nice curve. Um, oh, okay. and then, well, so it's just, it's just in a, uh, well, not like, not not a PID loop because PID is but it's doing the proportional part of a PID loop. Yeah. Uh, there we are. So you'd be able to see it on this look. Yeah. You see there, look. So it goes fast to begin with, and then then slows down at the end. So I love this thing that he's built as well. That uh, it expl cool. explains how that all works. So that that was uh, yeah. that's well uh, well worth having a look at. Uh, but it's got like bearings and all sorts in it. So it's not like like hardware that I've got hanging around for the base. I think. But, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's all three D printed. And I think he's got a link down here for yeah the actual. Um, Get, again, again, this is the sort of thing you can 3D print and, and, and build and give to a school. Yes. Um, and they can use to teach the kids. Because you put something like that in front of a bunch of kids, class of kids, and say, right, we're going to make this move and blink and do <laughs> stuff. Um, right, it may not be as good and as smooth as, uh, you know, with server smoothing and stuff like this. But then you can teach them those subjects and say, well, yeah, how do you think we can make it smoother? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and build up from that. To a full PID loop where it will, uh, you know, do all the, uh, what is it, proportional, integral, and differential, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and do all the, the, the full PID loop controlling of, of a robot arm, which is what I used to do when I was in chemistry and engineering, um, and programming them and stuff, but, um, just so you can get full fluid motions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very cool. But that, that's all that was to it, look. So it was just, it takes. Yeah. The current switch, 5% of the current and 95% of the previous, and then it just goes around in that loop. Um, but I thought that could probably work for the robot arm control yeah. uh, to get that to work with Signal Light. It's only be. for Pincher because that, that is quite abrupt, isn't mm. it? Yeah, so I thought it would be so. quite cool. But that would work on the ramp up and the ramp down as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, probably would, so. cool. I liked that. Yeah. That was quite cool. Uh, so, yeah, so there you are. I mean, uh, uh, Alexa's even getting involved in it now. Um, so yeah. there you are. So I mean, that's um, that, that's enough links for tonight. I think. Alexa, all the peat, lots of raspberry pies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I already have too many raspberry pies. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So um, yeah, I mean, Maria and Anastasia, thank you so much for for joining us. I know, um, obviously, I've done most of the talking, which is which is kind of normal. Um, but uh, we'd love to have you back if if you'd be willing. Um, and obviously we could it, it'd, be, it'd be very good to have you back um uh, like talking about one of the projects you're working on um because we we tend to do these uh these kind of you know ideas of going through all the links but it'd be great to have you back um you know and showing off one of your projects uh, which would be kind of cool 
That um, uh, would be great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I had a wonderful time with you. Yeah, it's been good. good. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for coming along. So um, um, we didn't get time to talk about it, but I'm going to quickly mention it. Oh yeah. Um, I posted yeah. a blog post um, about using uh, this ESP32 um, and using the Nano framework, which uh, we've talked about before, and um, we've had them uh, on our uh, show before a few months back. So you can look at the history on on uh, YouTube. Um, but using Nano framework .NET C sharp um, to program this little ten dollar board. Um, to connect to Azure IoT Hub. Um, so I've written a blog post about it um, and um, I'll put it in the uh, into the link uh, in the chat um, as well. Um, I've beaten you to it. Yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. please go there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a um, it's been a, a bit of work in uh, getting it all working. Uh, it's been a bit of a pain, uh, but eventually got there, um, had a sort of a brainwave while I was away on holiday and relaxing. Uh, please beat me to it. Um, but yeah, there's a blog post there that explains how to set up um, using the SP32 or one of the other boards, the uh, 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 ST micro uh, boards, if you haven't got any SP board kicking around. Um, same process, works exactly the same. Hold on, uh, hold yeah. on stop, stop. Who, who's not got an ESP board hanging around? Everyone's got an ESP board. I know. Yeah. Tripping yeah, over everyone them. should have one. If you <laughs> haven't, all of them. They're about a penny each. Alexa, order ESP32. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah but um uh, hopefully take a look at the blog post feedback happy uh, on twitter if you've got any comments or or, uh, or or thoughts on it but um the idea is i'm gonna kind of carry this on my plan is to see if i can get the um get the camera working as well um which needs a bit of uh p invoking across to um the camera library which is written in c um which is going to be fun um I, I did have hair honest um, so yeah, we'll see if we can get that working as well to see if we can get the camera module sending, taking an image and then using, uh, Azure IoT hub to send it up and stick it into, uh, into cloud storage somewhere. I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do with it yet, but that's, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan. So, uh, yeah, what's this space? Sounds so, good. uh, DJ Taz says it's time for bed and I don't think he's far wrong. It's 20 past 10. So, well, it's, yeah. it's not. It's 20 past 12 for Maria Anastasia, actually. It turns out she's just put in the chat there. Oh, so. you're super late. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Uh, so I feel wow. bad now. We've, we've kept you up. Um, no, no. <laughs> I am uh, a night owl. Well, so. that's good. Good news for us. So, uh, yeah. So thank you uh, to everybody for, for coming along and joining us and uh, apologies for the technical issues right at the very start of the stream, but you know, uh, next week should be a bit smoother. Um, we we'll hold you to that, Pete. Yeah, no, well, yeah, it probably won't be, but you know, I can say it. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to come out that way. Um, and yeah, uh, do if you have any ideas about what you want us to talk about, or any uh, and, uh, cool links, then you can follow us on IoT at IoT Live on Twitter. Just send us a tweet on there, and uh, we'll try and include it in the show. Um, and onwards from there, we'll see you next week, 9 p.m. BST again. So thanks very much for joining us. Yes. And we'll see you soon. Yeah. Cheers, folks. Thanks a lot. Night, all.